here's my greenhouse, and I built the entire thing by myself. Join me today as I give you some tips on how to do this so that you can build this greenhouse or any greenhouse kit. Hi, I'm Gardner Scott, and this is my greenhouse from Planta Greenhouses. Now, right up front, I did build the entire thing by myself, and I'll show you what that process involved. But I encourage you very, very strongly to build a greenhouse kit with at least two people. While I was able to do this, it took a couple weeks, and it was difficult trying to figure out how to put all the pieces together without that extra set of hands. The more people you have to build a greenhouse, the easier it's going to be. It can be difficult determining just how hard it's going to be to build your greenhouse kit before you actually get it. But you can do a little work ahead of time to try to figure it out. I knew that this plant to greenhouse was going to be extra sturdy with a lot of pieces. This is designed to withstand 60 mile per hour winds and six feet of snow, something that I want for my Colorado climate. Well, as I looked online and saw the pictures with all of these extra supports and because it's built out of steel and polycarbonate, I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but I felt confident that it was something that I could do. If you know someone with a greenhouse that was built from a kit, check it out. Go to see at their greenhouse what the pieces look like, what some of the construction is. I had some gardener friends that came here to see this greenhouse before they purchased theirs. And then after seeing it and listening to how I constructed it, they decided that this was the kind of greenhouse they wanted as well. The design of the greenhouse will also affect how easy it is to construct. A simple greenhouse with just four walls and a roof is probably not going to be much trouble. One like this that has sloping walls and is almost 10 feet tall is going to be more difficult. Now, when you start narrowing down which kit you're interested in, go to their website and see if they have videos that tell you how to put it together. That's one of the nice things about Planta. On their website are the videos with the steps for putting the greenhouse together. So I was able to see before my greenhouse arrived just exactly what the steps were and that's what allowed me to determine that I could do it by myself. When you order a greenhouse kit online, it's going to need to be shipped to you. Now, many of the companies will allow you to ship directly to your address. It does add to the cost. I was able to have my plant or greenhouse shipped to a local trucking company, and then I went there with my trailer and loaded up the greenhouse to bring it home. It saved me a few hundred dollars from having it shipped directly to my house. The greenhouse kit is going to come in many different boxes, and depending on the size and the type of construction, it's going to be loaded on pallets. So when you pick it up, you need to take that into account. After unloading the boxes, I went ahead and laid all of the pieces out on the floor of my garage. You can expect that each of the pieces will have a small label. By laying everything out ahead of time, it's going to make following the directions much, much easier. And you can expect that there's going to be hundreds, maybe even thousands of screws and bolts and nuts. And it's also helpful to lay all of those out ahead of time as well. Now I suggest you take a good amount of time getting familiar with the instruction guide for your greenhouse. This one's pretty good. It has 27 pages, a lot of diagrams. It has a couple lists of all of the pieces that should have arrived with the kit to make sure I have everything. But even after reading this front to back four or five times, 
there was a lot about it that didn't make sense. Luckily, I had those videos to fall back on. So I would read the instruction manual while watching one of those videos, and even then, there were some gaps. When it came to the actual build, as you'll see, it didn't always make sense, and I did make a few mistakes. I began constructing the greenhouse inside my garage. It was a clean, flat, level surface. All the pieces were right there, and it made much more sense to do what I could inside before moving outside where I'd be exposed to the weather and uneven conditions. Now, I strongly encourage that you get yourself a tool belt. This made the job so much easier. I was able to put different size screws and nuts in the different pockets. And I was able to have all of the tools I needed to construct the greenhouse right at my fingertips. If there was one tip that you should take away from this video, it's to get a tool belt before you start constructing your greenhouse. My greenhouse is built from the top down with the roof pieces, the first ones that are assembled and put together. But I didn't connect all of the pieces because I needed to carry those pieces outside for the rest of the construction. Now, while I was waiting for my greenhouse to be shipped, I did a leveling of this area as much as possible. You need to figure out what kind of foundation you're going to have for your greenhouse. And it's best to have the foundation in place, or at least mostly constructed, before you put the greenhouse on top of it. This greenhouse design actually has legs at the bottom, and those legs are buried. So I didn't need to get this area completely level. I just needed to get it leveled enough so that I could then dig the holes where those legs were going to go in. With the roof sections in place in this level area, I connected them to make one long piece. And then it was time to start constructing the sides. By myself, this added a level of difficulty because I had to tip up the greenhouse, hold it with one hand while I assembled the side pieces. but it wasn't as difficult as you might think. The most difficult part of constructing this greenhouse was not building the first wall, it was building the second wall because I had to lift up the entire side of the greenhouse and then attach the side pieces. To do that, I spent a little bit of time thinking about it, I had some pallets, and I figured the best thing to do would be to lift up this side and place it onto the pallets so that I could then finish the construction of the side. Everything up to this point with the second wall, I was able to do by myself. But this was the first time that I began to recognize building a greenhouse kit by yourself may not be the smartest way to do it because the structure is galvanized steel and it weighs a lot. So to be able to pick this up by myself and then position the pallets and then lay it down and keep the whole thing from falling over was a challenge. And it took me many attempts to do it. This part of the construction alone is reason why you should consider having at least two people. And with a job like this, I think at least three. Two to hold it up and one to start putting the pieces in place. The actual construction is not difficult. If you've got basic experience with tools, you should be able to do it just fine. It's simply taking the screws and the nuts out of your tool belt and then attaching the pieces as called for in the directions. It took a while, but I was finally able to get the sides completely attached to the top portion. And then from there, it was just one piece at a time, attaching all the cross brackets 
and all of the supports and every piece as the directions called for. It's no surprise that there were a lot of nuts and bolts to put all of this together. That's why it took so long for me to complete this project. With more than one person, you could both be working or have a group of people working on the supports and all of those nuts and bolts at the same time. Now, with this kit, I have the windows and I have the doors. These were a little more difficult to put together because there were lots of pieces and everything needed to be put together so that it was square, so that it would fit into the openings. I didn't want to do this outside, so I went back to the garage to take care of this job in particular. And the directions within the manual just didn't give me everything I felt I needed. So I relied a lot on watching the videos on how to put the pieces together and then doing it right after watching the video. Attaching the polycarbonate exterior is another job that's best suited for at least two people. These panels do not have holes, so you have to put the panel in place, drill a hole, put the screw through it, and then attach the nut. Now I was able to put clamps to hold the panels in place, and then screw the hole, and then attach the nuts. But that became difficult as I started doing some of these longer panels. So I had to use clamps and pieces of wood and blocks to hold everything in place while I was screwing the hole and then attaching the nuts. This was another job that would have been better with more people. With one person to hold the panel and another to drill the holes, it would have been much faster. This should have taken just a couple hours if I had a team, but for me, it actually took a couple days. The top of this greenhouse is actually one piece. At the very center of this long piece of polycarbonate, I took it inside and I had to score a line and then bend the panel at that point. So one side of the double-sided polycarbonate is actually cut through so that I can get this particular shape. You may or may not have to do that with your greenhouse design, but be aware that if you have to start cutting the polycarbonate pieces, take your time, read the directions, and look at any videos about it. And when you put the polycarbonate panels in place, try to do it on a calm day when there's no wind. Because while the polycarbonate is very strong and can withstand severe weather, it's also very light and can blow away quite easily. So have multiple people to hold the polycarbonate if you're doing it on a breezy day or wait until the wind is calm. As you're putting all of the screws and bolts and nuts in place, the directions might say it, but if they don't, I encourage that you put everything in place just finger tight. And after you're sure that it's all installed the way it should be, you can come back and I use two tools, one for the screw and one for the nut to get everything tightened down completely. With the greenhouse in place, I was ready to anchor it to the ground. But first, I wanted to make sure that it was perfectly square. So I measured from one corner to the opposite corner and then did that again in the other direction and was able to shift the corners of the greenhouse enough to get it so it was perfectly square. And this was the first big mistake I made because I couldn't get some of these polycarbonate panels to attach correctly to the legs that were going to be buried. I thought I followed the directions right, but I did it wrong. The piece was actually installed backwards. And so about half of the legs were in place before I figured that out. 
it's important to put everything together and kind of give it that test drive before you take any next steps for the foundation. Like in my case, concrete. I actually poured concrete in the holes for the legs around the doors because I figured this would be the weakest spot with the door opening and closing on a regular basis. I wanted this to be quite secure. If I had poured the concrete before I found out that the legs were installed backwards, it could have created a big problem. And even with the legs installed in the correct direction, I found out that I had put the wrong type of bolt in the wrong hole because this greenhouse has these long metal bands that actually attach to the legs, go over the top of the greenhouse, and then attach to the legs on the other side to really anchor it in the ground. Well, it wasn't until I got to this step that I realized that I needed to redo some of those bolts. Again, put everything together with the greenhouse before you do that final anchoring to the foundation. With the legs finally figured out, I double and triple checked the measurements from corner to corner to make sure everything was right and then filled in the holes. And this greenhouse has been subjected to very strong winds, some gusts in excess of 75 miles per hour, and it didn't even move. I was inside it during one of the big windstorms, and I could hardly hear and feel anything. So when you construct your greenhouse correctly, and particularly anchor it correctly, you can expect that it's not going anywhere, it's not going to fall apart, blow apart, or have anything happen to it because of the weather. I have a lot more videos that tell about what I did to the inside of the greenhouse after it was constructed, so watch one of those videos next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. Mm -hmm.